See this form problem. A solenoid of length 0.5 meters. Length is 0.5 meters. Okay. Has a radius of 1 centimeter. So we can write 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. And is made up of 500 turns. It carries a current of 5 amperes. I is equal to 5 amperes. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field inside the solenoid? We know that B is equal to mu naught Ni. We should not substitute N is equal to 500 because these are the number of turns for a given length. How many number of turns are there for a unit length? We should find out. Number of turns per unit length. n is equal to 500 by 0 0.5 it will be 1000 continue so n is equal to 1000 turns per meter so l is equal to 0 0.5 meters r is equal to 10 to the power of minus 2 meters so therefore l by r we will get approximately 50 so that's why we can say you, we should use the lengthy solenoid formula. So L by R is approximately 50. So therefore B is equal to mu naught Ni where mu naught is equal to 4 pi into 10 to the power of minus 7. N is equal to 1000. We can write 10 cube where I is equal to 5 amperes. 4 pi into 5 into 10 cube into 10 to the power of minus 7, 10 to the power of minus 4. Twenty pi into 10 to the power of minus 4. So 2 pi into 10 to the power of minus 3. 6.28 into 10 to the power of minus 3 Tesla. So it is divided by 10 into 10. You will get 2 pi into 10 to the power of minus 3 Tesla. Where 2 pi is equal to 6.28 into 10 to the power of minus 3 Tesla. So this much field is there inside the solenoid. Next, the toroid. So the toroid. Toroid is identical to solenoid or similar to solenoid. Why this similarity exists? Solenoid is a lengthy wire which has n number of turns along its length with equispacing. Each turn acts as a concentric loop. Now this lengthy wire is folded in the shape of circle that is nothing but the toroid. So it was folded in the shape of circle. So this whole diagram is a lengthy bounded on the length. Now it is bended like this. So it will be like this. A circular along that wire is winding like this so like this but the problem is that so toroid is a hollow metallic ring on that one metallic wire is wounded like this Okay, insulating rod which is bounded, which is molded in a shape of circle when, with respect to the solenoid structure. Inside or interior of the toroid or exterior of the toroid field is zero. In interior or exterior. For this problem, so it means at any point B is going to zero. To eliminate this problem, 
we should check the sectional view of the magnetic field inside the toroid. Sectional view means we should assume the magnetic field loops as a concentric circles around the fixed, fixed point. So within each loop we are going to find out the B and summation. There also we will get the zero. But for the whole number of turns we will get the expression. So the sectional view of the toroid will be like this. This is one. This is one. I can draw another also. Maybe this is the center. So within this loop, this is the loop, loop 1. This is loop 2, this is loop 3, loop 4, like that. We know that BL is equal to mu naught IE. What is this length? 2 pi r. Where mu naught is constant, but current enclosed in this loop is zero because field always emanates out. So no current exists within that loop. So the current enclosed by a loop 1 or loop 2 or loop 3 is zero. That's why we can write mu naught into zero, the whole will become zero. So it is 2 pi r1 for loop 1. Similarly, L2 is 2 pi R2 corresponding B2 is 0 and L3 is 2 pi R3 corresponding B3 is also 0. It follows the symmetry. This is symmetrical relations making the B as 0. But for whole number of turns n, we are going to find the expression. So what we can understand is, this is the loop structure. This is also one of the loop structure. These are all the points. So this is the source of the magnetic field. So let us suppose for the whole n turns, the current enclosed by the n turns is let us say ni. Therefore, bl is equal to mu naught ie for n turns ie or current enclosed. by the loops or turns is equal to n i number of turns into current enclosed in each loop. So therefore B L is equal to mu naught n i What is this L? For a whole loop, the length of the loop is 2 pi r, circumference of the circle. Therefore, B into 2 pi r is equal to mu naught n i. So, therefore, B is equal to mu naught n i by 2 pi r. So, what is this N? N is equal to average circumference into in that circumference number of turns. So n is equal to average circumference is 2 pi r in that one n number of turns are there. So again we should substitute n is equal to 2 pi r n. Therefore b is equal to mu naught into 2 pi r n into i by 2 pi r. This 2 pi r, 2 pi r get cancelled. I got the value mu naught n i. Again this mu naught n i is similar to the solenoid. So in the beginning of this concept I, we, we said that uh, toroid is uh, similar to solenoid. With respect to this equation, it is proved. 
नेक्स्ट वन द मूविंग कॉइल गैलोनोमीटर सो मूविंग कॉयल गैलोनोमीटर गैलवनोमीटर इज ए सेंसिटिव डिवाइस विच सेंस द स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ करंट एंड द डायरेक्शन ऑफ करंट एंड वन मोर थिंग वी कैन मेक दिस गैलोनोमीटर टू वर्क एज ए अमीटर टू वर्क एज ए वोल्ट मीटर सो हाउ इट विल बी पॉसिबल वी विल डिस्कस इन दिस ब्रीफ थिंग्स सो गैलोनोमीटर इज अ सेंसिंग डिवाइस we know that it has a spring whenever you applied the amount of certain amount of current the spring experiences the electromagnetic induction that's why it rotates and this rotation tends to restore in the original position which creates the torque and this torque helpful to find out the helps to find out the galvanometer constant and next the shunt resistance concept like that so this is the structure of moving coil galvanometer north and south poles of a magnet so one circular coil inside one spring and there is a pivot okay this pivot is helping to keep the coil rotates freely and not to be come out of the path and these arrow marks are nothing but the direction of the magnetic fields when it is placed between north and south this north is uniform magnetic field and s is a permanent magnet and there is a pointer which gives the value of deflection so how it will works whenever this moving coil galvanometer along which is connected with the spring and this pivot placed between the two magnets means we are injecting a certain amount of magnetic field onto the moving coil galvanometer's structure then because of the applied magnetic field when it is placed between north and south it experiences a torque because it used to rotate like this and inside the spring compresses when it is uh, uh, rotating maybe towards right or left there is a possibility for the compression of the spring so two forces are acting one is uh, magnetic force inside the galvanometer that is nothing but the force of compression nothing but the tensional force these two forces both are perpendicular to each other because one force compressive force is like this magnetic force is like this these two forces are perpendicular to each other that's why it creates a torque so the torque is equal to n i e b force into perpendicular displacement ilb into displacement but whenever this coil rotates towards the right or left with respect to the applied field the spring compresses it won't be in the compressed state it tries to expand and it comes to the it tries to comes to the original state so when it is coming to the original state it is nothing but a counter torque is developed within the spring to oppose the external force so that counter torque is related with the spring so it has spring constant and rotational constant so the counter torque due to spring is equal to k phi now we can find out k phi is equal to n i a b therefore phi is equal to n a b by k into i this n a b by k is called galvanometer constant galvanometer constant so this pointer moves from left to right or right to left with respect to the position of the spinning of this coil so which points to the direction of current and the amount of current generated because of this applied magnetic field so this is the phi nab by k is galvanometer constant so this galvanometer we can use it as a meter and old meter 
galvanometer can convert to ammeter can convert to voltmeter ammeter means which is useful to measure the current voltmeter measures the voltages to connect the ammeter i is equal to v by r this expression will come in that uh, ohms law and uh, the resistances which are connected in parallel v is equal to i by r v is equal to ir i is equal to v by r in series we can get r is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 now we will see how this coil galvanometer or moving coil galvanometer acts as a meter as well as old meter if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus